Hey guys, it's Landon Blake with Redefined Horizons and On Point Workshops. In this video, a couple videos, we're going to talk about email. I know it's a fascinating subject, but it is, uh, it's really not a fascinating subject, but it is a necessary evil. And in, in this couple video or two, what we're going to talk about is why you shouldn't use your email inbox as a task list. Um, and the reason I'm doing this video is my HR person uh, was having a hard time keeping up with her email. And she's like, I don't know, how do you do this? How do you keep up with your email? And so I promised her that I would do uh, do a, a video or two to help her. So that's, that's why I'm doing this. So I do have a few things I want to tell you here at the beginning of the video about email. Um, so the first thing I would tell you is uh, email is the bane of my existence. So I hate it. I get way too much of it, and I have for years, um, and I spend a huge amount of my work week uh, managing emails. Now, we have done some things here at Redefined Horizons to uh, greatly reduce the amount of email that I have to deal with. We can maybe talk about that in a different video, uh, but I still get too much of it, and, and so I hate email, and I do everything I can to reduce, number one, the amount of email I get, and number two, the amount of time I spend on my email, uh, but... Despite all that effort, I still spend hours. It's hours every week um, managing my email. Now, management of email is easier if you don't use your inbox, your email inbox, as a task list. And so that's what we're going to talk about today. Don't do that. It makes email management harder. So what are we going to talk about today? We're going to talk about why is this important? Number one. Number two, why is it a bad idea to use your inbox as a task list? I'm going to give you some specific reasons. Number three. What's a simple alternative? So if you watch this video and you decide I'm right, I shouldn't be using, Landon's right, I shouldn't be using my uh, email inbox as a task list. What do you do then? What's the alternative? We'll talk about that. Four, we'll go over a simple system you can use to help keep your email inbox clean, right? With as few emails as required in, in your actual inbox. So those are the four things that we're gonna talk about. What are we not talking about today? I'm not gonna cover specific email software. We use Outlook at work, but I've used other email software. Thunderbird from Mozilla is a cool open source email software you could, you could check out. We're not gonna talk about specific task management software. I've got a bunch of other videos on our learning channel about Trello and Basecamp. Uh, I've used both of those. There's others, excellent. There's excellent task management software there. Uh, we're not gonna cover email plugins. That's, that's not gonna get into that. Um, and we're not gonna talk about how to hack your email. Um, you know, use rules or or do other kinds of tips and email tips and tricks. So uh, we're not talking about that. If you have a cool email plugin or an email hack that you want to share with me, please feel free to do that in the comments on this video. And I may talk about it. I'm gonna check it out, and I may talk about it in a, in a future video. But we're not going to cover that today. So <clears throat> why is this important? Four reasons why it's important to use your email inbox properly and not as a task list. Number one is as you progress in your career as a, lot, a land surveyor or a mapper or civil engineer, you're gonna get more email. So if you're a CAD tech or a, you know, a, a, an entry level person on a field crew or Robman, you're not gonna get a ton of email. But as you move up your career path in your organization, you're going to, you just, that's just the nature of the beast. So if this isn't a problem for you yet, it will be in the future. <laughs> if you're going to be on a professional track, you will get more email. Second reason I mentioned email consumes a lot of time. So if you do this, if you manage your email inbox poorly, you're going to be less efficient. It, it can make a huge difference in your work week. And number three, if you're bad at this, if you're bad at managing your email inbox and you try and use your email inbox as a task list, you're going to communicate poorly and lose track of tasks. So it's a lose-lose. It's the opposite of a win-win. So you're not going to communicate well, which is a tool. That's what we use email for is to communicate. And you're going to manage tasks poorly. So you don't, this is, all, this is no bueno, these three things, right? That's why we're doing the video on this. Okay, so why is it a bad idea to use your inbox as a task list? In other words... You keep emails in your inbox as reminders of things you need to do. Okay, so I'm going to give you five reasons why that's a bad idea, specific reasons. Number one, 
If you do that, you can't process or file an email until you've completed the task, right? So that means email sits in your inbox longer than it should, right? Which leads to clutter and it makes your inbox more difficult to manage. Number two, tasks can get buried in your email. So if you get a ton of email like me and you've got, and you're using your emails as a reminder of your tasks, what happens is as the work week goes by, that critical task that you're using your email as a reminder of, it gets buried, it, go, it gets further and further down the stack of emails, right? And it's easy to lose track of it when, when you get a ton of email like I do. So you can, you can, your task can get buried in your email. These next two are related. They could, they could even be combined, three and four. And it's an idea that comes from relational database design. And, and it's the relationship between tasks and emails is what is, in relational database design is what we call many to many. In other words, it's not one to one or one to many, it's many to many. So tasks can be related to more than one email. Okay, so if you're using an email to represent a task, this creates problems. Same thing with number four, an email can be related to more than one task, right? So again, this is why it's not a good idea to use an email to represent a task because you can have more than one task per email or more than one email per task. And so that makes that system break down. And then finally, number five, email software isn't optimized for task management. That's not what it's made for, right? So email software is made to communicate via email. Now, some email software like Outlook has task management built in, and that's okay. That's not what I'm talking about. It's okay if you do that, but if you are using your email inbox as ta for task management, you're, you're, not, you're, you're misusing the software. That's not what the email software is made for. So these are all reasons why it is a bad idea. And I know a lot of people do this, okay? But it's a bad idea. As you get busier as a professional and you get more email and more tasks to, to track, this system does not work well. So we're gonna take a, I'm gonna take a brief pause, take a break, grab something to drink. And then when we come back, we're gonna talk about an alternative system to manage tasks. So if you've decided you, you, that I'm right, you're like, man, Landon's right. I shouldn't be using my inbox for task management. I'm gonna give you a really simple way to fix that problem when I come back after the break. So what is a simple alternative to using your email inbox as a task list? Maybe we, we talked about why that's a bad idea. So if you decided, yeah, you're right, I need to do something different, uh, what can you do? What's a simple alternative? Um, use a separate task list. Now that sounds like, wait, that's it? That's, that's your grand insight, Landon? Yeah, that's it. It's pretty simple. Use a task list. You know, that it doesn't have to be, you don't even have to have software to do that. You can use a graph pad, a notepad. You can use uh, notes on your tablet. You can use dedicated uh, task management software like um, Trello or Basecamp or even just a simple list you know, simple list software on the web or, or an app on your mobile device, on your cell phone or your tablet. So just use a simple, use a, use a task list to do your task management. Um, it's simple. I know it sounds simple, but it really is effective. It's worked well for me over the last few years. Um, like I said, it could be standalone software or you could use, uh, if, you're, if your email software has built-in task management, use that if you want, if that's easier for you. So I know that's in Outlook. I think it's in Google's Gmail as well. Um, I'm not sure if it's in Mozilla Thunderbird, but it probably is. So if, if, if you're not ready to tackle a fully independent task management or project management software, it's okay. Use the task management capability of your existing email software. They put it in there because they know that people do this. <laughs> so even the people that make email software recognize that this is a problem. So why should you do it? Why should you keep a separate task list, a task list that's separate from your email inbox? Uh, what that allows you to do is it allows you to separate the processing of your email from completion of tasks. So now, as soon as that email comes into your inbox and you make the time, you can process that email, right? If it's a task, you can create a task in your task list software and you can delete or file the email, right? So it helps keep your email inbox clean. Um, you can associate a task with multiple emails if you want. So for example, if you're using something like Trello or Basecamp, you can create a task, uh, like create a card in Trello, for example, and then you can attach multiple emails to that task card uh, if you wanna do that. 
Um, and and uh, I'll do a separate video and I'll show you how that might work. Um, you can also uh, associate uh, a, an email message with multiple tasks if you want. So you can create three or four or five or six tasks from a single email if you need to do that. Um, so using a separate task management tool will let you do that. Uh, that allows you, once you separate your task management into a, into a separate application or, or, or part of your email software, what that allows you to do is really focus your email inbox on communication, right? Which is what it's for. So that will help you be both a better communicator and a better task manager, right? So now I don't do a perfect job of this, but as a general rule, if I've got an email sitting in my inbox, that means that's somebody that I need to communicate with sooner rather than later. Because if that's not true, that email shouldn't be in my inbox, right? If I'm, if I'm using my system properly. And then finally, the last, the reason why that this is a good idea to use, to use task management software for your task management is it allows you to take advantage of features in task management software that are not built into your email, right? And that there's tracking completion, doing scheduling, assigning tasks to different people on your team. It's so much better than trying to manage your task list in your email inbox. Okay, so I'm gonna take another quick break. When I come back, we are gonna look at a simple system that you can use once you've decided to separate your task management from your email. We're gonna look at a simple system. It's got four steps that you can use to keep your email inbox clean. Once you've decided that you're not gonna use your email inbox as your task management tool, what can you do to help keep your email inbox clean? In other words, uncluttered and focused on communication. I'm gonna outline a four-step process that I use. It's not perfect. I don't do it perfectly, but it helps me and I wanna share it with you. So there's, it's pretty simple, four steps. The very first step, you identified the type of email. Okay, so, and I'm not gonna cover that in this video, I'll do, a, I'll do a separate short video on that, but you know, is it an email from a coworker? Is it an email from a client? Is it a marketing email? Is it, um, you know, is it, a, is it a, a request? You know, there's different, there's different types of emails that you get on a regular basis in your inbox. So you wanna figure out what type of email is it? The second thing you wanna do is if it's possible, you wanna take immediate action on the email. Um, so what I what I do is I kind of go through I go through my inbox in phases and in the very in the in the first phase or the first run I'm going through and I'm 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 kind of taking care of low hanging fruit. So in other words, if I can respond to the email in like let's say 60 seconds or two minutes, you know, a minute or two, I will I will typically do that. Right? Is take, if somebody just needs a quick answer to a question, I will send that answer and uh, and get that email taken care of. Now, it may not be a reply, it may be just filing, or it may be uh, sometimes I go and create a note in my note keeping software, or let's say somebody sends me an interesting video to watch, maybe I add that to my favorites list on YouTube, but it's something I can do relatively quickly, right? Certainly less than five minutes. So that's the second step. If you can take immediate action, you do that. The third step is if you've got an email that is you can't take immediate action on, but you need to do something at a later date, create a task for it, right? Create a task for later action if you need to do that. That's, again, we're doing that because we don't wanna use our email inbox as a task list, right? And so I do this quite a bit. And then finally, the last step after you've gone through these first three is you file or delete the email, right? The key, the key is to get it out of your inbox, if at all possible. And I just have a little side note here you need a filing system to do this, right? So I'll cover that in another video. We'll, we'll do a video. Maybe we'll talk about types of email and, and the filing system, but the goal is to file or delete the email. You wanna keep your inbox as clean as you possibly can. That's it, pretty simple, four steps, right? Hopefully this will help you. I do this once a day or Every other day, I try to at a minimum, I try not to let it go more than a couple days because then it just, it gets overwhelming with the amount of email I get. Um, you know, if you don't get a ton of email, you might, you might be okay to do this once a week. Might be enough, but stay on top of it, right? Be regular 
you'll do a better job if you're doing it regularly. It's like poop scoop in your backyard. Okay, so in review, if, you're, if you watch this whole, whole set of videos, what did we talk about? We explained to you why good email management is important, right? We also talked about, I don't know, four or five reasons why it's a bad idea to use your email inbox for task management, right, as your task list. Number three, we explained a simple alternative to using your email inbox as a, as a task list, right? And that is to use a separate task list, right? Whether it's on a notepad or in task management software. And then finally, we looked at this pretty simple system once you've decided to separate your task management from your email management, we looked at this simple system that you can use to help keep your email inbox clean. Thank you for watching. I'll do a couple more short videos on, on email management here in the next few weeks.